I was going to go over the the sponsors list. Um, this, but I, I think I think one of the key things that uh, that we like to uh, mention is that our partnership here with uh, uh, Telemundo Minnesota and La Raza, and um, having been in this business uh, 20 years, uh, I I I like the fact that um, they're very aggressive on, on multicultural marketing, and um, they want to be involved in these um, in these programs. So I want to thank Armando and and uh, your uh, the Hefa, um, Maya Santa Maria is on her way, um, and she will be doing our keynote. And um, I want to thank you anyway, uh, Armando, for the relationship. And uh, and uh, just wondering. Um, uh, as we move along, some of the, the great programming you have coming up this summer will be very interesting. But I, I think one of the, 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 the very reasons we're still in business all these years is we were able to attract some of the top uh, agencies in the country. Uh, De La Riva Group is one of the most trusted market research companies serving Fortune 500 private and government clients in North and South America. With over 28 years' experience in the field, De La Riva Group is dedicated to helping organizations make better business decisions through the use of actionable market intelligence. And our, luckily, we have the CEO here, Carlos De Leon, is currently CEO of Night Lab USA De La Riva, USA, based in Miami. He has 17 years of experience in market research and strategic counseling in Mexico, Europe, and the USA. Carlos has worked with clients such as Ford, Televisa, Bimbo, HBO, and Visa. Throughout his market research career, he has specialized in studies related to Hispanic segmentation, advertising effectiveness, and the impact of emotional advertising and brand-generated engagement. He published the book, Hispanic Game, based on a multi-methodological study with Hispanic families living in the US. The book summarizes fresh insights, ideas, concepts, and narratives that make it possible for brands, companies, or anyone with an interest to construct a solid bridge of communication with this segment. He studied marketing at the Charter Institute of Marketing in England, earned a master's degree in applied social and market research methodologies in the University of West Manchester in London, and attended the leading professional service programs at Harvard Business School. Not bad, huh? Yeah, okay, you know. Anyway, Carlos De Leon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone, nice to be here. Uh, and um, what, what you're about to see, it's a, it's a pretty good summary of the type of research we do. Every, uh, every one or two years before every World Cup, we do a very large study uh, across the United States and Latin America to understand what uh, consumers are thinking about soccer and, and, and everything that relates to the, the, the world of sports and soccer. Uh, what, uh, the, the way we approach research, uh, pr you're probably familiar with the traditional focus groups, and uh, we, we, we don't do that much, that type of research anymore. What we do is we immerse ourselves with consumers. We literally uh, spend an average of 36 to 48 hours with consumers. Our analysts go and, and live uh, in their homes. They go to soccer matches with them. They go to uh, everything that, that surrounds brands and, uh, and marketing, really. And uh, this, this is a very large study. And uh, we've been doing this study since the Korea-Japan World Cup in 2002. We did a follow-up in the Germany World Cup in 2006. We did a South Africa World Cup uh, for uh, the last World Cup in Brazil. And we're preparing already for the uh, Russia uh, World Cup. Um, we usually pre-sell uh, these studies about a year before the World Cup, so to, to give time to brands to prepare and define and, and, and generate strategies and, and communication around uh, the World Cup. Uh, you will not be seeing a lot of data and statistics, don't worry. Most of it is, is videos. I, I wanted you to experience uh, what it is to be in one of our ethnographies. 
and the type of uh, information that we we generate. We will begin with a it's, it's a bit long video. It's about five minutes uh, to give you a summary of, of what happens in in these types of studies. Uh, before that, we we work a lot with the major league soccer, and uh, this uh, verbatim pretty much summarizes what soccer means to uh, Hispanic fans in, in in the U.S. It's really much much more than than a game. Um, when the Mexican national team comes and plays in the United States, uh, I, I, I really recommend that you go to one of these matches. It's like getting a diploma on marketing and activations and, and how to do it really well. It's, it's a pretty good benchmark to any major league soccer uh, team. Uh, Mexican the Mexican national team, to give you an idea, they don't play any more friendly matches in Mexico because the business is so big in the U.S. that all of their friendly matches are happening in the U.S. And they pre-sell, they're literally like rock stars. It's like you too. They, they so the, the stadiums are sold out in every single venue they go to. So really go to one of them. Go two, maybe three hours before. And it's a pretty pretty good way to experience what uh, brands that are doing things right with Hispanics are, are doing around the soccer. They buy tickets, they, they tickets three months, three months before the game. And this is uh, the video summary from the story. América sí, bastante. Es como si fueras en México, mucha familia va. Pones el pretexto que vas a ver el partido de la América y te la pasa. <risa> de Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa de Quiero Los Ángeles son unas 8 horas. Tenemos más compañeros, tenemos 26 en total. No, ah. carros separados, carros separados, automóviles separados. Este es el chuntaro, está el proyecto. Aquí, normalmente aquí se puede dar sus lujos. Yo creo que si estuvimos en otro país, Sería un poquito más complicado darte esos lujos. VIP, 100 y algo. Estamos hablando casi como de mil y algo. Estamos hablando casi de una quincena, ¿no? El objetivo aquí principal es el partido. Pero de una vez a venir unos días antes y aprovechar un poco de ir afuera y conocer más. Con la familia. Yo, yo pienso que cada, cada familia es diferente, sí. lo puedes hacer lo, a, como lo caro que uno quiera. No, lo que pasa es que aquí que es familiar, amigo, un mexicano siempre ya tiene su picnic, tú sabes, un día de campo, hack dogs, carne asada, micheladas, margaritas, cervezas, tecates, modelos. Moros. Tenemos surtido. Fácil, este, esta vez te sale como un, un quinientón. mejor porque la coca aquí no está buena. La coca en México está buena aquí. ¿Y el sabor? ¿El sabor está muy diferente? Oh, no, imagínense, la marca no hace el, el equipo. No, una marca no lo hace. Pero tampoco le va a poner uno chapa, ¿verdad? Algo, algo, algo que vale la pena no se va a poner algo que no. Pase que vamos a ganar contra México, pues, 2-1, 3 a 2, tus cabezazos, tus golazos. Yeah. 
a través del fútbol hay más, más, más unidad entre los latinos y, y toda persona que juegue fútbol eh, se hace amistad con, con no, no importa la raza, negro, chino, güero. Ponía la, el símbolo de mi equipo con la bandera y luego ponía la, eh, con una así y luego ponía el patrocinador aquí. Sony porque... Consumers today are becoming marketing experts like, like never before. Um, the, the, the social, uh, social media used to be a complement to strategies today. It's one of the most important elements uh, surrounding that. And, 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 and kids, what kids know about sponsorships and how brands are being involved with, uh, with a particular team in the long term, they, they, they really can uh, trace all of those fake brands that are just there for the short term or the, or the brands that are really committing to a team. Um, when we interview uh, first generation Hispanics, um, not in a sports study, but in, in any study, uh, about 70% of, of the times they tell us that one of the first things they do when they come here in order to integrate to their new city town or whatever it is, uh, it's go to a soccer match. Uh, that's when, when they get to know uh, how it is to, to, to live in the United States. It's a, it's a source for integration in, in the very first time. Uh, it gives them a, a sense of, of, of belonging. I mean, what, what Mexicans tell you is this is, f this is a sport where when we can actually beat the United States. Uh, they, it used to be true. Not anymore. Most the last time uh, the, the U.S. team is is pretty much kicking uh, our ass <laughs> every time. But uh, the, the the perception is that this is a sport when Hispanics have a lot to uh, to bring to the United States versus all of the other sports. Um, one of the one a recent study told us that. Uh, What the three teams with the highest amount of b uh, fans in the United States, you'd be surprised, maybe not surprised to hear that it's the Dallas Cowboys, uh, the New York Yankees, but the Mexican soccer national team. Not, a, not only uh, across Hispanics, but when you think about fans and, and, and American sports are very fragmented. I mean, you tend to follow at least three or four different teams, college, baseball, basketball, but f out of the 53 million Hispanics living in the U.S., 35 or 36 are Mexicans, and they all follow one team, the Mexican national team. And, and, and what you saw on the video, just to give you an idea, you don't see that even in Mexico City anymore. That, that, that fever uh, of expectation of the national team, this is one of the best countries to experience uh, soccer today in the world. Um, to give you an idea how Americans and Mexicans uh, or Hispanics perceive soccer is almost as if we think of the brain and we think of the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. Like Hispanic soccer is more fun, uh, it's sharing identity, it's part of being a community, uh, it's dance, it's emotion. And on the other side, the left side of the brain, we have uh, U.S. soccer. And this is the reason why Americans are so good in sports in general. But this is why you do so good in the Olympics. It's a strategy, it's planning, it's discipline. But then there is uh, an, an overlap in which uh, when you go to the soccer stadium, you stop thinking for 90 minutes about where you come from or... or, or, or uh, conflict, sources of conflicts. When you do research with Hispanics, you tend to hear a lot of negative things uh, about being Hispanic in the U.S. When you go to a soccer stadium, it's as if they forget about all of those problems for 90 minutes and uh, they, become, they become one. And next is a video uh, to show you uh, a bit more of the American culture in soccer. Grace, hurry! <laughs> Grace saying, come on, Mom, I do not want to run. Because <laughs> they have to run extra if they're late. 
You got your shin guards, you got your shoes, you got a ball, you got your well, water. A soccer mom is a common term we use to describe um, a mom that's dedicated to taking her kids to soccer practice and sits on the sidelines and roots them on and she's not just there for moral support but she brings drinks and snacks and someone to be characterized as a soccer mom is someone who's very timely and organized and um, creates boundaries like leaves work at work and is committed to a family at home and um, she doesn't necessarily have to be a stay-at-home mom she can have a career but but she still takes on a full job of chauffeuring the kids to soccer practice. It's like the manager. Mm -hmm. They they do all the um, the dirty work. This is, this is a good way to summarize what I told you before. If you go to the soccer field, uh, you won't see races or social classes. Um, and the picture of, of Houston Dynamo, when we do uh, research about uh, which are the teams that are more involved with with uh, with the team and doing constantly things to innovate the Houston Dy Dynamo? It's a it's a pretty good benchmark of of the teams that are doing uh, things really well with uh, with fans. The book uh, that we wrote about Hispanic segmentation, which is called Hispanic Game, you can buy the book on on, on iTunes or if you tell. Richard, I'm, I'm sure we can send you a copy from, from the office. But we, what we try to, to explain in that book is uh, when you work with Hispanics, you tend to hear a lot about a culture, the term acculturation. I don't believe in, in that term. We don't see that on research happening. Uh, what we see is that uh, the, let's say, benefit that U.S. Hispanics have in the U.S. is that we tend to have a switch on and off a uh, button from our Hispanic side or our American side. Even if you have been one month living in the US or 30 years, when, you, when it's convenient for you to play your American side, you will play your American side and the same with, with your Hispanic side. And uh, we are very strategic in, in, in that way. So the main difference that we tend to find uh, every time we do research is about the generational aspects. Um, one of the biggest misconceptions of Hispanics in the U.S. is that we want every time we come into the U.S. we want things our way and we want to Hispanicize uh, everything in the U.S. And, and that's not true. And there is a reason why we came into the U.S. and it's to find the things that we don't have uh, at home. So we do not necessarily want to have everything uh, Mexicanized. The first generation for the first generation soccer is everything. You know, it's uh, it is the generation that is much more aware of what's happening with La Liga, with America, with Pumas, with Cruz Azul, with all the teams. Second generation, we start seeing uh, a, a bigger preference for uh, major league soccer teams. And when the World Cup comes and Mexico plays uh, against the U.S we see a lot of support for the U.S. team versus uh, Central American or, or, or Mexican teams. And the third generation, uh, it, it used to, there used to be a perception that this is the generation that is becoming more and more American and, and, uh, and is getting more uh, detached from um, Hispanic values and culture. But we found uh, exactly the opposite. I mean, it's, it's a generation that uh, everyone here probably it has a pretty special connection to their grandparents, more than a different connection than the one you have with your grand with with your parents, and that's what we see in the studies through uh, grandparents. Even if they are in the U.S. or Mexico, they try to learn a lot about uh, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras. But what the third generation is trying to do is try to rebrand in a more cool and aspirational way what it is to be Hispanic, Mexican, Mexicano, Guatemalteco, or whatever that is. So the third generation is much more aware of what's, what's happening in Latin America than we, than we tend to, to believe. My name is Erika Orozco. I'm from the state of Chiapas. I came here for 11 years. 
vivo con mi hijo, tiene nueve años, eh, me vine buscando un futuro mejor. Tiene otras ideas en base a las escuelas y no olvidar nuestras raíces, ¿verdad? Que pues la mayoría de los mexicanos quien no ve fútbol, yo creo que no es mexicano. Pues yo escogería la MX porque pues ese es mi país, ¿verdad? Es el fútbol. Yo voy a la MLS. jugadores el David, David. Red David. A ver, siempre es así. Por ejemplo, cuando le ha tocado jugar la selección con Estados Unidos y pues bien difícil estar escuchando aquí que cuando mete gol México, Estados Unidos y cuando mete cuando pierde México pues tener que pasar sí, el, aquí se ve el partido de Estados Unidos contra México el momento man. the good thing is that when we ask them eh, on all of the elements that that come up in, on top of mind when they think about soccer um, versus many other sports or activities you can see everything is extremely positive and it's very similar across first generation, second generation Hispanics and non-Hispanic uh, Americans. Uh, most of it has to do with pride, sport, nationalism, family, commitment, union, friendship, leadership, responsibility, honesty, community. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty healthy field for constructing in any type of, of communication strategy. They are most of them both in touch with two or three uh, teams, always, uh, of course, first the national team. And uh, what we've been listening uh, to, to, to these fans uh, complain about the Major League Soccer lately is that they do not have the biggest uh, Latin American stars anymore as they used to. I give you the example of Cuauhtémoc Blanco in, in Chicago. They have the perception that that they're not turning that uh, th the attention of the MLS is not as focused that is as it used to be on Latin American stars. Um, you have great uh, Premier League uh, or Spanish League or Italian League players uh, in, in many of the teams, but they keep mentioning for some reason. Remember that if if it's true or not, what's what's what matters is the perception is that they, don't, they do not have the big Latin American uh, stars anymore. The LA Galaxy just uh, signed Giovanni Dos Santos, and uh, in whoever signs Chicharito in the future, which ev eventually will happen, will be a, a, very, a very lucky team uh, indeed. It's going. So we played a, a, an exercise with, uh, with Hispanics in this study. And uh, we wanted to know what happens when they're watching uh, soccer and the, their national team plays uh, against some of the other options. And if I'm Mexican, for example, and I play against uh, Guatemala, of course, I will be supporting Mexico. But uh, if I'm of Mexican origin and the US is playing England on uh, any other team, the, f the support goes for, for the United States. Uh, it's becoming like they're second team and it's a way of uh, honoring the country that welcomed them in, 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 in the first place. So they, it's a pretty pretty good relationship with the US. They tend to know uh, who's playing in the US and, uh, and at the end if you think about it in the World Cup if you have two teams and if your first team is, is Mexico it's uh, you know you will be much happier if you have a second team because Mexico probably will be eliminated in the <laughs> first or second round. And, uh, but uh, if you are Mexican and uh, Mexico plays against the United States, uh, probably 50% of the sample will go for the US these days, second and, and, and third generation. So that's, that is uh, very, very impressive. Si es el partido de Guatemala, todos a Guatemala. Pero depende si es Guatemala o El Salvador, mi mamá El Salvador. Andy, el, 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 el portero le gusta el Andy, quinto. Andy, él luego se pone una playera de El Salvador para apoyar a la mamá. A muerte al Salvador. Si ganó El Salvador, por ejemplo, le digo, ay, Guatemala, yo lo siento, yo le voy a Estados Unidos. Le digo. <risa> <risa> mm, 
A Estados Unidos ahora. Me gusta el equipo que tienen ahorita. Estados Unidos. Uh, la ah, yo, yo, es lo que le digo a mi hijo, ¿por qué te quitas la playera? Si uno apoya su, el, el equipo hasta la muerte. Like, like I said before, the United States is, is really uh, the ideal, uh, it's becoming the ideal place for soccer consumption. You have, uh, on, on the one hand, uh, the, the media consumption in terms of soccer matches from the Mexican uh, leagues, it's, uh, it's very impressive. I mean, you, you see the awareness and how much they really know about what's happening in La Liga de Mexico, it's pretty impressive. It's as much as they know as if they were still living in Mexico. On the other hand, they have the MLS and, uh, of course, all of the universe of, of the European leagues. And they look for different things when they look for different leagues. Uh, national leagues, they are reconnecting with, with their homes, with their origin. It's like the verbatim you saw about saying, you know, it's like going back home every time I see one of these matches. And then they also want to know what's happening with the MLS, but that's, that's where you live. That's where, you know, people you work with, uh, your neighbors. And uh, of course, uh, the European leagues. And what's, what's really funny is that even the connection with the European leagues tends to be a Latino connection. Like most of us who are Real Madrid fans, who hopefully will win the Champions League this Saturday, uh, it started for Hugo Sanchez. Hugo Sanchez, I don't know if you all know him, but he was uh, the top scorer from Real Madrid from uh, around 1987 till 1992. Uh, then the biggest fan base of Barcelona in Mexico comes from Rafa Márquez, who won pretty much everything with Barcelona and then came to play to the MLS with New York. And uh, you you keep seeing these Latin American connections with uh, with with European leagues, uh, James Rodriguez from Colombia and Real Madrid, etc., etc. So. Uh, the the universe for soccer consumption in in the U.S. is pretty unique. You do, you do not see this in in, in many in many other countries uh, in the world. Mi equipo favorito del, del, de México es Monterrey. Me, tengo la camisa de Monterrey, pero no la me la puse. Si jugara este Dynamo contra Monterrey. Pues porque es muy veloz y da pases el color. Porque azul es mi favorito. Los teléfonos que, que, que cuando puedes hablar para México. Hablo por teléfono con mi abuela. Sí, quiero ser futbolista. I will support Pumas and Chicago Fire forever. Um, one of the things that that has be has changed uh, a lot in this decade, especially versus. Uh, other times that we have researched uh, Hispanics in the U.S. is that due to the uh, bad times that Mexico is going through right now, crime, uh, drug cartels, and all of that, the, new, the, the third generation, the, the, the youngest generations of Hispanics in the U.S. are not going back to Mexico as they used to. Some of you probably have even memories of, of going every year to Mexico in the summer or in Christmas, Navidad, etc. But Hispanics in the U.S. are becoming even more critical than Americans of the crisis, and, 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 and they are more fearful of what's happening in, 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 in Mexico. So one of the ways that they are uh, using to, to, to connect with, with Mexico and what's happening in Mexico is Facebook and all of their network and family members back from Mexico are becoming like, like their news correspondents uh, of, of, of the news in Mexico. They are not 
they're literally not going to Mexico and they tell you, I'm not going because I don't want to get killed, I don't want to get kidnapped. And um, when even Americans who travel to Mexico, they're not that tough in criticizing what's happening in, in Mexico. Um, so it's, it's a good thing to know how the, the use that they're giving uh, social networks, especially Facebook, uh, to understand what's happening in Mexico. Is you need to understand uh, when you talk about talk to your consumers or your fan base uh, what th the use that they're giving to, to Facebook and the connection with Mexico. When I'm watching like local soccer, I like watching Galaxy because you know I'm in LA. I'm like you know it's my it's my home team. But if I'm watch if I want to watch like a higher level, like the best level, I'd rather watch Real Madrid because you know I like watching you know. Uh, Ronaldo play because he's you know one of my favorite players. Miren un partido de España allá de la Liga Española acá, entonces va a preferir mejor ver el de la Liga Española porque va a mejor mejor espectáculo. Ahorita el mejor es el español. El español es el mejor fútbol. Messi. Messi, okay. Y de aquí de esta liga. De la MLS de aquí. No. To me, to me, it's boring. They don't, yeah. Soccer. And we it's rather, a long we drive come too. Home, uh, we rather come home, watch TV, and watch, you know, Real Madrid. No Real Madrid, no Barcelona. Eso de Houston ya tiene que ver. Así de Galaxy ya no, ya no miro eso. Bueno, le voy al Dynamo. Bueno, de otra liga, de la liga de los campeones, le voy a Manchester United. Podemos decir que de México, el Chicharito. I imagine her being, me being like, Alex Morgan. He's um, on the U.S. women's soccer team. When Beckham was here, he didn't impress me at all. But he brought in a, a big crowd. Yeah, like people like and her. And he's a good-looking mm -hmm. guy, so yeah. like women want to see him play. No fue. Y vamos a ir donde cuando vino este. Este Messi. Messi. Me gusta más international. Es donde miro más. Barcelona. De la actualidad ahorita Leo Messi. Yo, yo le voy a hablar al marido. Oh, international is Messi, David Villa, uh, Andres Iniesta. Ellos están tirando. Mira, pero la calidad, cuando la calidad es bien más profesional, profesional se pasan bien la pelota, tiran bien, ¿saben? las decisiones son mejores. I prefer the European leagues actually more. I don't know. I just. The championship league, like Manchester United. like the Cups and all that. Porque tenemos Fox Sports, tenemos Univision, tenemos Telemundo, tenemos a ESPN Deportes que nos traen fútbol de todo el mundo. You can see the fans know really well what's happening with soccer around the world. And those, the last section of this presentation focusing in brands and, and, and media consumption. Um, second generation. Uh, Hispanics are already consuming uh, media uh, in, in, in English language, most of them, in what it's called English uh, preferred uh, segments. But when it comes to soccer, they'd rather look at, 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 at soccer in Spanish because they tend to uh, recognize that, that the commentators in, in, in soccer are much more entertaining than when you watch soccer <laughs> in English. It's like, w it's like looking at a different, uh, entirely different match. Yo veo el partido de, de fútbol mexicano, ya sea sudamericano o europeo, en el canal Univision. I never, uh, never actually see Univision. It is a channel that we have tuned out. I'll show you how, how much access in soccer here in this country is. And those are all the games going right now. It's on Gold TV, Univision. So there's no reason to go to an MLS game. You just watch international soccer. And we watch the Spanish. And we learn Spanish at the same time. I teach them Spanish.
Me gustaría tener un programa de una escuela por televisión del soccer mexicano. ¿Te imaginas? Yo lo miraría, claro, también mi hijo. Mami, es que yo también me estoy preparando. ¿Ah, sí? Estoy sí, preparando para qué, porque yo nunca tengo que poner un cuerno ni nada. Yo voy a ser futbolista. As you can see, uh, which uh, channels they used to to watch uh, soccer, the second generation, it's, you know, pretty similar to, to first generation in terms of language. Of course, uh, Americans uh, tend to watch more the, the English networks, uh, but in even some of them, as you saw, rather watch that in, in Spanish. And uh, like I told you at the beginning, this is, uh, we have just two more slides, and uh, they are becoming really marketing experts and they know when brands are really committed to the sports and the community surrounding soccer or when they are just there for the for the short term so we ask them to place a lot of the brands that are involved with soccer in this uh, like pyramid and and under understand which brands they think they're partners of soccer which ones are proactive and dynamic and which ones they you know just can come and go and uh, we've seen this uh, all across uh, the last uh, four, five World Cups, and uh, the the brands have moved uh, up and down, and and, and it's uh, it's really the the main differentiator. I mean, if you come up of this presentation, if you remember one factor that has made the difference for brands to move up in this pyramid, if those brands that are committed with local communities, uh, uh, developing uh, young promising stars or involved directly involved involved with colleges and universities to promote soccer, uh, to bring it to that uh, upper level, are uh, those brands that keep doing well in our studies versus those brands that just you know, advertise or promote soccer while the World Cup or one of the big bigger soccer events is, is going on. Just uh, 10 recommendations regarding the type of recommendations we give our clients uh, when we do these studies. Uh, Hispanics know very well when they look at your communication and your advertising, if you know them, if you know what they go through if you know what is uh, being his, uh, Hispanic in, in, in the US, know them with more detail and go beyond the acculturation and uh, models that are traditionally used. Uh, present them as leaders in the world of soccer. Uh, recognize them as active fans. Like I said, go to one of the Mexico uh, teams, national teams, and, and, and experience the Hispanic way of doing the tailgate uh, with soccer. Um, Commit to local communities and with with uh, promoting soccer. Promote soccer in forgotten spaces, for example, local soccer fields. It's amazing how difficult it is today to play soccer and to reserve uh, even a small space to play soccer with your friends. Uh, in Miami, Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, they are fully booked for, for months. And when you go to these spaces, you don't see many brands taking advantage of, of, of these uh, spaces. Be loyal to team and fans. Uh, promote the incorporation of prominent uh, Hispanic players to, to National League. Young Hispanic players. So to avoid the perception that the good players of soccer just come to the MLS to, to retire, you know, when they play their best years in the Premier League or Spanish League, and they come here just to collect uh, their last money for retirement. Just bring the young ones like Galaxy did with uh, Giovanni Dos Santos and um, bring them closer to their idols. And uh, most importantly, like I said, share the gains with social activities and sports development. That is the factor that places you in a different level. And uh, thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Well, uh, Carlos, I'll tell you, it, you know, nobody appreciates more seeing the actual consumer talking on the screen. Thank you. That's a terrific presentation. You know, hearing from 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 your 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 customer, 
you know, how they live. And that's, that's what's happening throughout the households and the cities here. This is something we have to figure out, you know, that Latinos' relationship with, with soccer, you know, they might love five teams. So if they love five teams, it, are the United going to be one of them? That's, that's what we have to make sure, that they're going to love the United along with the others. So um, meanwhile, you know what you have to do? Any questions for Carlos? Yeah, Amalia. Excellent presentation, Carlos. Um, you mentioned that um, companies are not taking full advantage of advertising and promoting to Latinos. Why do you think that is? I think specifically to 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 soccer, and uh, there are some very uh, good examples. And uh, why they're not doing it, I I, I don't know uh, to be honest. But w what I think is that they they tend to go for the natural flow of consumption I sports in the U.S., which is uh, f uh, football, American football. I mean, not not soccer and and, and basketball, but uh, every four years that we do the study, we've seen the budgets for Hispanic soccer uh, advertisements and, 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 and spends uh, duplicate or triplicate uh, nationally. So it is happening, but there's a lot to be exploited uh, out there. And uh, also regarding the research methods, we are in the time of big data and we've we have more information that we've never had before about the consumers. So uh, in our experience, and this study, Coca-Cola used this study a, a lot just before the World Cup, it, it, uh, as an example. And uh, because even though they have all of the information that you can imagine, there's nothing like going out and spending uh, two or three days with, with the family. I mean, they literally open their hearts uh, to you. And um, it, it's probably still, in my experience, the best way to get to know consumers today, ethnographies and, and social uh, research. Yeah, uh, Mateo from Minnesota United. Um, with soccer, what is a way to counteract the idea that soccer here is inferior to soccer abroad? Just because that's something that we definitely face that, oh, well, I have other teams that I watch, but here it's, it's a lower level. Why would I want to go out to a soccer game up in Blaine? The Th that's a very good question, and, and one of the most difficult things to do in marketing is change perceptions. And um, at the end, the perception is reality. But uh, I think what's happening with MLS teams in, 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 in Latin American uh, tournaments, like uh, CONCACAF tournaments, Copa Libertadores, you start seeing much more uh, the influence of, of the MLS. And they're really becoming uh, very good. So my suggestion to, to the MLS would be to take all of those facts of how much the level of soccer has improved in the US and use it in, in their communication. You have plenty of facts to demonstrate that the level has gone up. And uh, one of the ways to, to look at that is uh, when European players come into the MLS thinking that they're here to retire, first thing they realize uh, when you talk to them is how tough it is and how, how competitive uh, soccer is, is becoming. And one of the thermometers of that is that, uh, let's say, David Villa, for example, in, 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 in a different decade, if David Villa had come into the U.S. to play, he, he would have never have been considered to be playing in the Spanish national team in the European Cup, for example. And now it's different. Th th they, they are going back to the national teams because they are still on top of their game, even though they, they came into the MLS. So it, there's plenty of data to, to, to show that the MLS is, is, is improving a lot. Well, how about a hand for Carlos uh, De Leon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, uh, Carlos.